Hello, Daniels here, and in this tutorial, we are going to add static resources that will be used by our JSP. We will see exactly what this means in a moment. Let's copy the previous project, Web3, and paste it under a new name, Web4. There we go. And now here, I'm going to also go to Properties, search for Web, Web project settings and change the context root to web4. So now when our project is deployed, it will be deployed under the web4 URL. The URL here won't be web3, but will be web4. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, now we're ready to work on the project to continue working on our project. Let's go to web content, web INF. Here's our at passenger JSP. And remember that since it is under a subdirectory of web INF, it is not visible directly from the browser. So we cannot just go to the browser and do something like web INF slash add passenger dot gsp anything that's under web inf is only accessible by the application itself and we've been reaching this gsp through the controller to we forwarded our do get request to add passenger to this gsp so the controller is of course able to use this, this JSP and forward our request to it, but since it is under web INF, we are not able to access it directly. Okay, there we go. But with static resources, we cannot allow a situation where a browser can, cannot access them directly we need to make our static resources directly available for our browser to access. Okay, so what we need to do is under web content, let's create a new folder, other, and let's, let's find folder, and let's call the folder resources. Resources, okay finish there we go and i created this right under web content inside of it we can go to we can create another folder inside of it and we can call the new folder css for css files and now we have these two folders right here and since the resources folder is not under web inf the browser is able to access it directly Okay, and I will not make us write the CSS uh, for the for the add passenger servlet and uh, for the add passenger JSP. There is a lot of HTML here that could use CSS for styling. I'm not going to make us write everything here because it's it has nothing to do with Java. So what what my plan is that we can just download the CSS that we need for this project. So what we can do is go to the course and find the lecture. This is the number of the lecture is going to be different, but it's going to be called add static resources to our JSP files. Let's open it. Let's go to, to the materials you can download. It's kind of cut the names, but we need to download the second. We need to download this resource that maybe if I refresh, they will put a full name, but we need to download the, no, the, this resource that call, that is normalized.css file. I have a feeling that when the course is going to go live. It's actually everything is going to be cleaner and nicer. Which is just it looks like this right now, but normalize.css save, and the second one theme.css and save. So now we got those two CSS files. Let's uh, open containing folder, and here they are. 
So I'm just going to copy them, copy, and paste them in my CSS folder right here. So I'll kind of save us the tedious work to now go ahead and write all the CSS. I just, we can just download the CSS that I prepared ahead of time and paste it here. And it's going to be available for our application to use. Feel free, you know, to change any of the CSS. It's not going to affect how the Java works. But now that we got the CSS, well, we need to, to in our JSP, we need to include those CSS files as resources for our JSP. Now back in our JSP, we need to add link tags. So our JSP will reference our CSS files. This is just standard HTML. This is no Java. Now that we have our static resources in a folder, which the browser can access, all we can need to do is just go to link well style sheet. There we go. href is the path to to the style sheet. So it will be to the CSS file. So it will be resources, then CSS, and then the name of the file. So for example, normalize.css. And the second file, let's see, it's for the second file, it's going to be theme.css. Oops, theme.css. Well, there we go. I'm going to do control shift F to format. Okay. And there we go. Now our, we can test this JSP page and we can see how hopefully it's going to show up, not just as the form, but also as, uh, but not just as the form, but also with our styles, also with those CSS styles that we have. So let's right click on Glassfish and click start to start the server. Now that Glassfish has started, let's right click again, click on add remove and let's add web for. So now that the server has started and our application has been deployed, let's go to the browser and let's go to this JSP page. Let's go to the servlet that forwards, forwards the request to the JSP, the add passenger servlet. And there we go. This is the form that we created. You can add the first name, a last name, a date of birth and select the gender to add a new passenger. This is some of the CSS styles. You can, you're, you're welcome to go to the theme.css file and change the CSS styles. Don't change normalize, but you can definitely change theme. Uh, but the important part here is not so much the CSS, but just the, the only part that's important to understand is just the form element with the add passenger action and the input tags and the input tags. I discussed the, the first name input tag in detail and the other input tags, last name, date of birth and gender are exactly the same. They're just additional input tag, input tags for additional form informa information. Great. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll continue working on this project in the next tutorial.